Hey folks, Quilly Teen here and welcome to Let's Play Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. If you don't know, Cataclysm DDA is a super hardcore, proper roguelike game we're talking about. Turn-based movements, lots of complexity. In fact, this is possibly one of the most complex true roguelikes there is out there. One of the most complex games, I'd say, in general, right up there with something like Dwarf Fortress. Of course, has its own roguelike mode as well, but I don't know, there's something else going on in uh, Cataclysm CDDA. In particular, um, all of the... Um, all the crafting that you can do in this game is just mind-boggling. Uh, it is a game where, like, the turns are six seconds long, but also you're working to survive for years and years and years in this post-apocalyptic zombie hellhole. It is really amazing. It's sort of, um, set just vaguely slightly maybe into the future you got like some 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 futuristic things that are going on especially as you explore a little bit and you're you discover more of the story and you're like wait hold on wait what was going on what were these scientists doing what is that thing coming straight at me everything is terrible all the time Welcome to Cataclysm. So I have done, I think, one little video of this before. It may have even been from something on stream where I sort of just derped around a little bit to show it off. This was like, I don't know, three, four years ago? It feels like it was ages ago. I've never truly properly played Cataclysm DDA. I should just say like CDDA. I, I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna, or just say Cataclysm. There we go. Um, I've never truly played it before, but I've been doing a ton of research this week and while i've avoided a lot of the sort of the the spoilers about like oh what the enemies are and what their stats are and what you have to worry about there or anything like that i believe i know mechanically in terms of the user interface and everything like that basically everything we're going to need to know there so hopefully there won't be too much stumbling that way while at the same time getting a pretty good experience so to start off with what i want to do is a very quick a little scroll through my options here and you can feel free to pause if you're trying to copy something just to compare uh, my settings with your settings. I am going to be running the uh, the chest hole sound pack, which is actually quite nice. I do have the volume muted because I'm not sure about the copyright status of everything. Once we get in the game though, there's going to be a lot of ambient sounds in the background. So don't worry about that. Uh, interface over here. We've got all the, the metric settings for things over there. And again, you feel free to pause if you're trying to copy any of my settings. I just want to get started as quickly as possible. Did I set these to be roughly okay? Uh, 1080, yes, we're good there excellent i'm going to use the chest hole uh tile set we can compare a few of the tile sets once we're in there of course you can play this game in pure ascii but i'm playing with tiles uh one of the things there's so much stuff that is in this game that if you're playing with pure ascii characters there's just so much repetition of the characters that you don't really have the ability to tell what's what uh with the same amount of clarity and with the tile set you can have really good graphical uh differentiation between the different things that are on screen so it really makes a difference uh chest hole that's somewhat cartoony looking. Um, one of the ones I like is the MX Oto over here. Now, by the way, Cataclysm is totally free to play and it is an open source game. So uh, with the fact that it's open source is one of the reasons you find like all these extra tile sets and things, a lot of community members developing. The MX Auto and a few of the others that actually have some overlap in the textures, slightly more sort of, I don't know, I mean, it's still fairly cartoony, but a little less maybe anime in feel. So if you want, you can go there. But one of the advantages of Chest Hold is that it does have one of the most complete sets of graphics, which is nice. I believe the one that's just called Chest Hold is exactly the same thing as Chest Hold 32, a 32 by 32 tile. Um, scroll down here. I did change the JSON dot text file to, or sorry, the fonts.json file to use a slightly larger font for the purpose of YouTubing here. Uh, nothing to do in a debug and the world defaults. We'll go over the world settings in just a moment. So if you didn't follow any of that, don't worry. It's cool. Uh, I'm going to be trying to explain as clear as I go as I go, but that was mostly for people who wanted to um, see what my settings are because I'm sure there's going to be questions. Okay, first thing you got to do when you play Cataclysm here is you've got to generate a new world. You can see I, ha I had one kicking around. I'm going to go ahead and select this world and simply delete it over here. Yes, and there we go. So you can uh, you can use your arrow keys to navigate here. You can also hit the um, the letters, the highlighted letters. It is case sensitive, so do note that you know if you want to go to world, it would be Shift W for example because it's capital W. So we're going to create a new world. First thing that we're going to do is you got to choose which mods to include because it is a game that is highly tunable. Again, a lot of this because of this it's very integrated with community driven content. A lot of people have different preferences about things and there's a lot of room for variations. For example, do you want, um, do you want, say, more magical elements? For example, if we go all the way down here, magical mods. A lot of these mods are included in the base game by default. In particular, I am using the CDDA game launcher to help manage this. Uh, this helps you download the latest experimental builds, which is definitely generally recommended. Uh, apparently, it's still, they're relatively stable, these, these sort of in-development builds, but they're constantly adding new stuff, and it's quite good. So, um... 
you uh, you can use this game launcher, and I'll, I'll link down below how to get it, to install the game in the first place, and it also is very easy to grab more mods. But a bunch of mods will come installed by default, some of which will be turned on by default as well. For example, if we go over here, the Dark Days Ahead, and you see the little yellow arrow here. The Dark Days Ahead is the core content pack, the base content for it. Uh, and a few of the others are enabled by default as well, but I've gone and added some more. Uh, just to go over, we've got the base pack, uh, enabled the Medieval and Historic Content mod, which allows you to make things like swords and chainmail and things if you want, which, you know, seems like the society might regress. That might make sense. More survival tools over here. Just if you do go into the wilderness, there might be a few more options for you. The stats through skills mod over here, which allows you to raise your stats, your attributes like strength and dexterity while skilling up. Otherwise, they're relatively static. Now, if I understand, one of the problems with, with Cataclysm is that online, half the information is out of date, half of it is wrong. Another half is was both wrong and out of date somehow. Uh, another half of it is personal preference that people are advocating as absolute truth. So it's, it is very hard to get all the details, especially for something that shifts so quickly. As I understand it, the base sort of vanilla stats through skills that is currently included in Cataclysm is effectively the same as stats through skills four. Uh, it is worth noting though, uh, how do I, there we go, tab. Um, oh, is it not in here? Oops, no, no, no. I don't want to, I don't want to abandon. Uh, I thought I had added the stats through skill for mod as a download, but I just updated my stuff. So maybe it went away. So you tab through these, these different headlines over here. The interface here is a little bit wonky. Anyway, as far as I know, it's the same as stats through skills four, which is a linear, or um, um, logarithmic progression It's better balanced. Anyway, I might be wrong. Who knows? Whatever. We're going to go with it anyway. I've enabled boats. Folding parts pack, I don't know if we'll get to the point where that matters. Uh, one of the default mods is filthy clothing, i.e. mostly clothing that you pull off of zombies will be filthy, which makes your character unhappy and can lead to more infections. Uh, if you don't like that, you can turn that off. It is on by default. Uh, disable NPC mods, their needs is another mod that's enabled by default here. Uh, keeps the NPCs just a little bit more vanilla and simple. And simplified nutrition is also enabled by default. If you turn this off, then you actually start to get vitamin requirements, which for the long-term play is very important because you gotta make sure that you're getting your, your vitamins see your vitamin B12, your, your you know sufficient amount of protein versus fats versus carbohydrates and things to keep going. Uh, I'm going to leave that on because it's on by default. And that's it. So nothing too, too crazy. Um, I know that uh, I know that one of the things people like, Icoon's, Ice Coon's Arsenal is very, very popular. I know that's for sure. Um, PK Rebalancing is fairly popular. So is Cataclysm Plus Plus. Uh, more buildings, more locations, even tall buildings and things is fairly popular. Tanks and other vehicles is super popular. Vehicle additions pack uh, is also super popular. And you know what? I'm going to turn that on. There we go. And um, and again, there's many more magical, magical mods and things that you can add, but we're going to leave them off. So now I'm going to cycle to the next tab over here. So the actual tab key on this screen cycles between these guys. And you have to use the uh, lesser than and greater than symbols over here, these sort of angled brackets to cycle between these larger tabs. Again, not the most obvious of the interfaces early on. So here's the world option. You can tune how your world is created. You can have bigger or fewer cities, for example. You can scale the spawn rate of all kinds of uh, monsters. So spawn rate scaling factor here is the density of monster spawns. So it defaults to one, you could turn it down or you could turn it up and then more things for items and whatnot. We'll leave everything to the default. You could go ahead and make the zombies slower if, uh, and or swisher or faster and stronger if you want a different game balance. Um, it partially depends, I would say, on what kind of start you're, you're setting up. You might want to tune those. I'm going to leave them on vanilla, although let me tell you, my start is going to be... The, it, if we survive the first five minutes of gameplay, it's going to be a miracle. If our character survives to the end of the first day, it means there have been two other miracle, uh, miracles have occurred. Uh, but I have a plan B in case something goes terribly, terribly wrong with that first character. Uh, we're going to start with a very hard setup. Anyway, we get to choose the initial time and season, season length. Construction scaling is the cost or time of uh, constructing things because you can construct entire buildings here. It's very cool. Force a season. Uh, wandering spawns is, I believe, was off by default for me, and it seems safer. These, if you turn this on, you get giant zombie hordes that do migrate on their own. There's going to be plenty of zombie hordes that move around plenty on their own, even without this enabled. Uh, mutation by radiation. Experimental Z levels is kind of interesting. So a, a lot of people are turning this on. Basically, in the base game, when you change from one level of the world to another, like you go up or downstairs, um, 
only the, the level that you're on is being actively simulated. Everything else sort of pauses by default. Turning this on will let other things continue to move around, which is a lot more realistic, but apparently in terms of performance and things like that, it's really not great right now. So we're gonna leave it on, uh, we're gonna leave it on off, on false. We're gonna leave it off over here. And uh, character pool points, that, that's fine. Anyway, and we can go and finalize the world. So we're gonna need a name for the world. So I'm going to name it Belgium. Of course, this Belgium here is located somewhere in New England. I believe the sort of de facto base setting for Cataclysm is sort of the Northeast of the United States, um, New England kind of thing in terms of like weather and, and some of the things that you might see, for example. But we're going to call uh, our area Belgium over here and we will go ahead and finalize this world. So now that we've got that, we can go and create a character here. So we're going to go to new game and there's a few different options. We're going to go to custom character, just to tune ours right from the start. It's going to load a variety of files over here. So depending on how many mods you've got set up, it may take a little bit longer to boot up. And we're going to make our first character. You can choose how the points are assigned. The default setting over here is currently multiple pools where your traits, stats, and skills each have their own pool of points. You can see them over here. We have, um, the order is a bit wonky, but we have six points to assign to skills. We have a zero points to assign to traits, but you can take negative traits to change the balance. And we have two points points to assign two stats over here. So again, it doesn't match the order of these uh, of these tabs, but that's what it is. So it's got the total of eight, but the total doesn't actually matter for our purpose over here because if there's multiple pools. Now we could change everything to be a single pool where we just have eight points. We can spend them anywhere we want. And then there's freeform where you can spend as many points as you want, which can be good for like role playing certain scenarios and things like that. And again, you know, maybe, maybe you're starting out and you're having a harder time, or maybe you've got a super hard scenario and you want to give yourself some early buffs or you're looking to test things. Hey, it's fine, man. You, you do you. It's going to be okay. I'll leave it on the default of multiple pools for this. Next, you choose the scenario. This will determine where you start and can also have an impact on uh, what professions are available to you. Now, the de facto is if, if is this first one, evacuee. You survived the initial wave of panic and achieved relative safety in one of the many government evac shelters. Uh, very, very solid start. Not, not a strong start, necessarily. You don't have a lot of stuff to, to with you, but you are in a relatively isolated location. You've got sort of a... a a, a, a base ready to go. You've got your base camp ready to go. You're still gonna have to go out in the world and get yourself in all kinds of trouble, but at least you've got a little place to call home to at least start you off over here. Uh, so it's it's pretty nice. Um, and yeah, then there's like really bad day. You start drunk to the point of incapacitation, depressed, infected, surrounded by fire, naked, and sick with the flu. This day went downhill really fast. So a bit of a difference. By choosing that, you do get to start with 10 extra points though to try to offset that. Uh, yeah, so they've got a few. We are gonna start with something that is insanely hard and doesn't give us very many points. This, again, if we survive the first like five minutes of gameplay, a miracle will have happened. We are gonna start in the school. You were at school when the principal shambled in and ate one of the students. And before you knew it, the entire campus was overrun by monsters. Guess school's out forever. Have a sip of coffee to help compensate for that. So this is how we're gonna start. We're gonna start in school. And we're gonna be starting as a student, specifically a member of the AV club over here. So uh, if we start as a teacher, you actually get one extra point. I think it's because you start with relatively poor um, equipment over here. Your your skills is your speaking skill and you've just got some normal outfit and that's it. Oh, and a permanent marker, woo! At least as a student, you actually start with a backpack. So we're gonna start as an AV club member here. We were a nerd. That's who we were. We start with electronics and computers and skills, which is not going to help us out a lot in the early days of survival. Our clothing is going to be a pair of socks, underwear, t-shirt. I like that it's a Linux t-shirt though. That's cool. Jeans, some sneakers. We've got one book or a magazine, Ham Radio Illustrated, which I believe gives us more electronic skill, or I think it can get your electronic skill to one, which you already have, but it's also got some crafting recipes in it. We've got a light jacket. Uh, all those, uh, most of the time when you start the game, your clothes is, is well fitted for you. It's not too big, not too small, which is important for encumbrance. Uh, we're gonna have a knit scarf, which is gonna help us keep our face warm. We've got a backpack, which is gonna help us carry things. And we don't start with any bionics. Note, one of the options here is starting as a bionic student, which would give us a few different things. Uh, survivalist junior, juvenile delinquent, which uh, keep, a, keep a note of this in case we do die. Um, this is a part of our plan B over here. Uh, gym teacher. So we start with a whistle, woo! <laughs> but yes, we are going to be a nerd over here. So let's go and go to the next trait. So my character that I wanna build here, she's gonna be called Danica LeRae. And she just moved to New England from, uh, from Louisiana. 
and so she doesn't really know the town too well, but she's a dedicated student. In the move, she's had to catch up. So she came in, in my mind, she came in on a Sunday to do some catch-up homework and, and, you know, grab some books and get ready and things like that. And she was at school doing some work in class and fell asleep in class. And she slept through the night. And she wakes up in the morning and looks at the clock and is like, hmm, that's weird. Why isn't anyone at school? And she stands up and looks out the window and all she sees is hordes of former students who are now zombies. Something's gone terribly wrong in the world basically overnight. We heard rumors of things happening in other towns, but you know, that was, we still weren't, it, things weren't really clear. It was just scattered things and it was probably just, you know, made up fake news. It was fake news, obviously, or so the president kept telling us. And, uh, and then, yeah, something happened here and uh, it looks like everyone else in town, as far as you know, has been zombified. And we're gonna start by having to make our way out of school. So what are we gonna be like? Well, I'm gonna say, while we are a bit of a nerd, um, we are also fairly fleet of foot. You know, maybe, you know, we, we do do some track perhaps, or maybe we're just really good at running away from bullies. Maybe that's, I kind of like that idea actually. Uh, we move fast because we're used to running away from fights. I think that's probably our, our best example of stuff over here. Um, what else? I don't want to go crazy with the traits too much. Now, what I can tell you is over in the skills, now, of course, we're going to start with the one point of computers and we're going to start with the one point of electronics. In my mind, our character here, whose name is going to be Danica Larey, ha her advantage in this scenario is that when she was young, her parents did force her to go and join Girl Scouts. Or I guess in America, are they called Girl Guides? I think so. I think Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, I think that's the, um, the British and Canadian, the, like the, the, the origin of it. And I think the Girl Guides... Um, is the the American variant, I think. In any case, this is going to give us some survival skill because we have learned a few things. Oops, wrong button. We have learned a few things in those classes to try to survive. I'm going to put our two spare points are going to go into survival. I wonder why it says three. Like it says nothing, and then I give a point in it, and then it says two in parentheses. It's not the cost because right now upgrading it costs one more. Upgrading again would cost two. I don't know why the three is in parentheses. I have no clue. But anyway, um, unless like the first point you come in, you, you put in actually gives you two ranks of it. It's possible. I'm not sure. Any case, so skill in surviving the wilderness and in crafting various basic survival items. This also covers your ability to skin and butcher animals for meat and hides. So, you know, we had a little bit of something else going on in in our youth that it's at least going to help us a little bit. So fleet footed and there's a lot of stuff like night vision is a super common trait. A lot of people pick up because it's really, really, really helpful to raise town, raise raid towns early on. And I suppose I'll probably pick it up um, just on the basis that. I do need a little bit of an advantage, and that is really, really handy. You know, maybe we're used to reading our nerd books, you know, um, by the light of a flashlight in bed when it's late at night, we're supposed to be sleeping, so our low light vision is good. But I think what we'll do is we'll pair that with um, nearsighted. So without your glasses, your seeing radius is severely reduced. However, while wearing glasses, this trait has no effect, and you're guaranteed to start with a pair. Now, of course, our glasses can get smashed, but as long as we've got some glasses, we'll be able to see okay, despite being nearsighted over here. You know, standard sort of geek situation here um you know maybe we're not too too strong we could have a glass jaw lowering our max hp 20 percent seems a little dangerous we've been nearsighted and farsighted i mean i guess so you could just be like bad in every possible way but i don't think we're going to do that um pass back asthm asthmatic if we're embracing the sort of geek stereotype you will occasionally need to use an inhaler or else suffer physical limitations you're going to start with an inhaler that sounds terrible i i don't know about that We'd be clumsy, we make more noise while walking. Uh, not sure. Flimsy. That's 25% less hit points. Well, that's a four point flaw. Wow. And stacks of glass jaw? Holy cow, you could be super weak. Maybe we have like a gluten intolerance? Actually, let's go with lactose intolerance. It's actually super common in uh, the world. It actually says here 75% of the world is uh, lactose intolerant. Some people put up with it anyway. Uh, and then they're like, oh, I don't know why I have the poops all the time. I can never figure it out. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, we still need one more negative point if we're going to balance this out. This is assuming we don't go crazy with all these traits. Uh, truth teller is a pretty good one over here because usually in my dialogues with NPCs in most games, I don't tend to lie to them outright. So we'll go ahead and do that. 
Is this what I want to do? I mean, I could probably, I could definitely make the character a lot stronger and a lot more min maxi by grabbing more traits, but I think this is going to be fine to get started here. My part of me wants to go sort of fast learner, fast reader. I guess that might make a lot of sense. Well, that's a three point thing. <sighs> three points. Jittery. During moments of great stress or under the effects of stimulants, you may find your hands shaking uncontrollably, severely reducing your dexterity. I love it. I love it. Boom. Fast learner, but jittery. And nearsighted. Am I starting to describe myself? I, I don't know. I think there's always a little bit of something in that in your characters. Anyway, so we're balanced over here. That's going to be fine. That's probably a really bad set of traits. It's going to make the game super hard, but it's going to make it exciting. Uh, we've got six points to spend on uh, traits. So, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that our character should be quite intelligent. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, and maybe a couple points in the dexterity over here. Because it feels like we're fairly nimble, is the feeling that I'm getting over here. That seems okay. Perception, detecting traps and other things of interest would be handy. Strength. Uh, gives you hit points and resistance to diseases and poison. Uh, just makes you generally stronger. Also can increase your carry weight. The thing that with carry weight that's kind of funny is it's not really, especially early on in the game anyway, it's not really the determining factor for determining how much you can carry. That's going to mostly come through um, uh, through volume of, of storage capacity. Anyway, so we're going to call ourselves here Danica Larray, uh, like that. Uh, you can randomize your name if you want, and... Uh, if, uh, it, depending on your scenario, you can ch alternate your starting location, but we're going to be starting in school. I don't think we've got a choice about that. You can hit the exclamation mark to save this template of your character if you're going to be playing the same character sort of over and over and giving it a try. You can absolutely do that. And then when you're done, yeah, you can keep sort of hitting either the tab key or the bracket key to advance forward, and that's what we're going to do. Yes, we are sure we're going to build the world. Okay, so here is us. Here's the world. You can use the Z key to zoom in, Shift Z to zoom out, and if you keep zooming out, it'll loop in or if you loop in or you zoom in too much it'll loop out so this is this is ourselves over here here's a uh, Danica Luray uh, wearing our glasses uh, it's currently very dark in here at school the power got cut you know there's no alarm bell to ring us to, to wake us up in the morning we're in school there's the outside and there is one zombie child and there's another one down here as well so we definitely we're not going to move right away we really have to give some think as to what we're doing and this is the difference between this start and a lot of the others the fact that we've got zombies on our ass immediately oh, that's going to make things tough very quick look at the interface over here over on the top right we've got our hit point bar so for our various um body parts uh, power will come in later if we get cybernetics. Our stats over here, strength, dexterity, intelligence, perception. The kind of myth face over here is our current morale. We are at neutral morale. Focus is based on morale and is a modifier to how much experience you gain from things. When you're at 100% focus, you earn 100% experience. If it goes above that or below that, you'll get more or less XP. This, our speed over here, this is how many basically action points we have per round. Per six second round, we have 100 action points and things will take, you know, more or less than that. If something takes more than your current action points, it eats all your action points remaining for this round, and then you wait until the next round and it keeps eating points. If you did something that took like 400 action points, you'd actually sit still for four rounds um, after taking the action, so, uh, or before taking the action. So you could you could be sitting idle a fair while. The, this is your stamina meter over here. As we run around or we do melee combat, we will get more and more tired, which can be kind of bad. This safe indicator just tells us that we've got safe mode on. Safe mode means we're, we cannot, it won't let us move if there's an enemy in sight, which is gonna be very, 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 very helpful for us. Uh, uh, we are currently feeling comfortable temperature-wise. We are currently in a regional school. It is snowing outside. We've got the phase of the mood over, moon over here, the current lighting. It is day one of spring. This is the position of the sun over here. It's early in the morning, and the, the sun will sort of rise and go all the way to the other side of this bar as we get to night, and then we'll see the moon rise and set, and that's our day-night cycle. If we get a watch or a cell phone or something else that can give us the time, then we'll get an actual time meter. This sound is the amount of sound the last action I took did, currently zero. We are wielding fists. We have no style. No, it's because we're not using a martial arts style is what's going on there. And we've got a quick little notation about nearby enemies that are spotted. There's a zombie child that we can see to the north. Interestingly enough, I don't know why it doesn't flag the zombie child to the southeast or southwest over here. Um, 
We've got a mini map over here. We can also bring up the big map over here of our area. So we are currently in the center square over here. And if you mouse over, actually not mouse over, but as I move my cursor this way, you can see in the top right corner, it tells us where we are. So we are currently in a regional school south from Agawam. Agawam is the town over here, which has an orchard, an antique store, a sporting goods store, an arcade, some houses, etc. There's Weymouth over here. Is that a police station? Police station over here. Very interesting. We've got a mansion. Ooh, fancy schmancy. See, radio station, houses, this is forest down here, the circle I believe is a garage, a parking lot, sorry, uh, a mine entrance, that's interesting, I think, oh, it's the brighter circle over here, the brighter O that is the garage, that's what it is, um, red F, oh, it's a fire station, ah, a pavilion, another house, garages, fitness gym, orchard, construction site. What is this thing over here? An anthill, we're not really gonna wanna get involved in that. And these H's over here is a motel. So, everything is gonna be crap. And the reason everything is gonna be crap is because all these towns are gonna be full of zombies. The school's gonna be full of zombies. Um, there's not an obvious place of shelter other than maybe we'll run directly into the woods. As, as our first source of shelter. The woods can have all kinds of badness as well, but it shouldn't have any actual zombies. So, plan one is probably to leave the school. Now, one of the handiest tools you can use is if you hit Shift V, it'll give you a list of everything that's nearby. There's a tab mode, you can tab either between monsters or items. So we don't see any items around us right now. We do see some monsters. There's two zombie child over here, and uh, they are both hostile, but they haven't noticed me. And the reason I know that is because there's not an exclamation mark to the left. Now, they're probably gonna notice me as soon as one turn goes by in game, almost certainly, but not quite yet. I can move up and down to, so right now I've selected the zombie that's six tiles to my Southwest over here. If I move over here, I've selected the tile, the zombie that's 14 tiles to my North over here. Um, now in the low light, which is the situation over here, the zombies may not be able to see me. In fact, remember I have the improved night vision. I actually may have a slightly better vision radius than they do. If I move directly to the right, this uh, girl probably or possibly won't see me. This little zombie, it was only a child and little is different about it now aside from the hungry look in its eyes. You'd be hard pressed to not feel like you were killing an actual child by putting it down. And then there's the other one up top. Uh, I'd love to search these lockers, but I think that might be a little dangerous. I'm going to hope that we can move to the east. And again, all we're trying to do right now is survive. If we can happen to loot some books or something on our way out, that would be a bonus. So, all right. I can't move right now because safe mode is on. I can either hit the uh, apostrophe to ignore a specific monster, or I can do the exclamation mark to turn it off. I will just turn it off for now. I do, if I hit escape and go into the options, under general, I have it enabled to automatically turn safe mode back on after 50 turns, which is really gonna be handy. So I'm gonna move one tile to the right. I'm gonna hit shift V again. Okay, they still haven't noticed me. It's too dark, which is good. By walking around, I'm making a little bit of sound over here. The sound, the number of the sound is basically how many tiles away I can be heard. From the northwest, you hear a kaboom times 14. So that might be some zombies smashing on a car or something. It's conceivable that there's a minefield that people are walking through. It could be. So we're going to keep walking this way. Ooh. From the southwest, you hear glass breaking. So that zombie over here smashed through the glass, and we could hear her do that. I'm going to say purr because it looks like a little girl graphic. Do we think she's following me? Now, we do have a scent. Zombies track by vision by sound and also by scent, but you really have to stay in a large area to start tracking things with scent. I'm gonna move down towards the wall over here. And what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna hit Shift X and move to the right. I have not actually moved to the right. All I'm doing here is peeking. I'm very unlikely to get spotted as I do this. If I hit Escape to get out of peek mode, it bounces me back. Okay, Clang, there's definitely a zombie doing some stuff. I'll move up a little bit more. I'm gonna do one more peek to the southeast. Hokey dokey. Again, I'm not actually here. There's a tough zombie, oh, who actually did notice me as I was peeking around the corner. See the exclamation mark? So, that's probably the end of our exploration of the school. I'm gonna try to go up through these doors. Maybe we can sort of lose sight. Now, going over this counter is slow. There's another zombie in there who hasn't spotted me. Again, I might be able to move around inside that room without it spotting me, but I don't trust that. So, I'm gonna close the door, except this zombie child has spotted me. Okay, we just have to get out of here. So I'm gonna keep walking for now. Oh, safe mode went back on, I'm gonna turn it off. Notice that the safe turns red when it's off here. 
and move around this way. So I'm actively being chased by zombies. I'm still walking currently. I'm not running yet, but I will be running soon. See, these lockers, would I spot automatically or? Yeah. So as I go by these lockers, I will automatically spot what's inside. I'm going to examine to the northeast. It's a book called Self-Esteem for Dummies. It can be understood by beginners. You need to read this book to see its contents. Useful, full of useful tips for showing confidence in your speech. Okay, there's a speech skill helps you deal with NPCs. I guess I'll pick it up. Might as well. And what is that? A book of essays. Collection of essays by various authors from around the world, including works by Churchill, Mailer, Echo, Eco, and Voltaire. Um, this is probably just a book to get enjoyment, but I guess I'll grab it anyway. Okay, I'm now in shady areas. Has this zombie child spotted me? Not yet. Okay, what's this book? A book of plays. I'll hold off. I already got an entertainment book. And this one here. What's a transistor? Uh, is about electronics and circuit design. Now, I already have one level of it, but I guess I'm going to grab it anyway. Okay. Oh, that zombie child did notice me now. Ah! All right, it's time to get out of here. So I'm gonna go and enter run mode. So you do that with the double quote mode button. Um, if you need to know the keybinds, I mean, you can load up the wiki page, but another easy way to do it is to just go to the keybinds page over here. And there's everything. I don't remember if you can search. Yeah, there you go. Toggle run mode. So there's the double quote over there and you can rebind these keys if you want as well. So I'm now running and you can see because there's an R over here as opposed to a W. And it's uh, while I'm running, and I should have looked at the uh, the walking speed. While I'm running, it takes me 44 action points to move one tile. So I'm actually going to get to move two tiles within a single six second round, which is going to help a lot. But as I run, my stamina is going to decrease over here. So I'm going to go go through the door. Plenty of people are smashing stuff. More zombies outside. Now I'm in the bright light. They're going to be able to spot me basically as far as they can possibly see. So. <sighs> How are we going to run? I don't like that we're escaping north over here because it's heading towards the town, which is probably going to be more dangerous. I'm really going to have to sort of loop around going east basically right away. And then I, my, my, my hope, my plan is to escape into the woods to at least catch my breath here. So we're still running. Now, there's a chance I'm going to be faster than a lot of these zombies. Oh, you can hear the wind. Whoo. Oh, feels chilly. Now, we're currently still comfortable in temperature, but that is falling. Uh, at some point, we will pause for long enough to be able to look at our clothing situation. Also check our stats over here. Currently, our head, arms, hands, and legs are all gonna get quite cold. Uh, feet, mouth, and torso are both like more chilly than hot, but being green over here, they're still relatively okay. Um, having my scarf might be helping my mouth. I'm not sure if it's actually counting as being covered or not. I guess we can take a look. Uh, if we go over and see the mouth, yes, the, the knit scarf is there. I believe I can toggle it. There's a something I can do with the scarf to determine whether it's around my mouth or just, you know, hanging around my neck or something like that. But for now, we're gonna keep going. So I don't see anything to my east over here. There are some crows to the northeast, but that's it. So far, all the other zombies I know about are to the west. And the closest one is a zombie child. I'm going to run a little bit more. Now I'm going to switch to walking just to not burn through my stamina too much because I should still be able to outrun. Because of my quickness, it's still, it only takes me 92 moves, uh, 92 actions to, to move, to walk. So I'm still going to sort of, every now and again, I'm going to move basically twice in what a single round, which is going to be good. So we're going to go around here. Uh, I could peek, but I'm planning on running this way regardless. I should probably put more distance between me and the school because if I go by any windows, some zombies will spot me. I'm going to zoom out a little bit to get a better sense. See, there's some windows down here. So any zombies that are in there might, might break the window and start chasing me as well. So I'm going to continue going um, straight east from this point. And I'm actually going to go and grab this rock over here. So by using the examine key, which is E, you can examine in a direction and it lets you pick up stuff that's adjacent to you without you having to like necessarily walk through the tile. So I'm going to grab the rock because we're going to need it for stuff. If nothing else, I could wield the rock and try to bash a zombie's head in 
if we get caught, but I'm trying to avoid that. We're gonna take a quick look at Shift V over here to get a sense of what's going on. Uh, we've got some acidic uh, soldier ants to the northeast, to the southeast. We do know there was an ant hill to the east, so that's what we're seeing there. So I don't really want to go any further directly east at this point. Bring out the map. The ant hill was over here, still fairly far, but they're clearly wandering. So um, now I'm hoping that I've got enough. Uh, what do we can do? X to move around here. That I've got some distance. Ooh, I think this zombie here. I don't think it tells us here if it spotted us. If I shift V though. Yeah, this tough zombie has spotted us, the exclamation mark over there. Uh, so, I guess I'm going to have to keep going sort of southeast. Uh, let's see, more red dips over here. And then straight south. I'm, mo I'm just looking at the mini-map now. To navigate. What are these things to the south? Uh, it's a bunch of dogs. Now, dogs may not attack you. It depends on how hungry you are, but on the other hand, a dog pack can certainly rip you apart. So I'm actually having to move slightly closer to the school again. Now, I'm not currently running. Okay, so now where we are, are I feel much safer about running directly south at full clip. Maybe even along the road. The zombies might be along the roads, but maybe not so badly. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to full run. What is this thing? A muffler. Oh, from a car. Okay. Now, we'll just leave that there for now. So, there's some gray bits to the south. Those are probably... Yeah, they're just squirrels that are actually running away from me. So, I want to put enough distance between me and the zombies so they sort of lose track of the fact that I was here. They may keep walking this way for a while. Oh, can you hear my heart pumping? That's because my stamina is starting to fall here. I run for a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. And we get a lot of notes about our... our hands getting cold we don't have you know we're not too chilly yet but we've got to keep an eye on the effects list over here we'll see our stats turn to start to turn red as we get some problems so i've slowed to a walk again and i'm going to keep walking south but i am going to enter the forest a bit more and here's where girl guide training is going to kick in we know that like at this point we've got a sense that the world has gone to poop it's not just our school either uh, everything is bad, and we're going to try to run into the forest and survive there for a while until we figure out what's going on. So, we need to gather some supplies, and one of the things we can do is, with underbrush like this, we can examine it and search it. So if I hit E and examine that direction, we can see if we find something. Now, searching underbrush is also a really good way to get survival skill. In fact, starting with a couple of points of survival may not have been that useful because you can train it up so fast, but I was trying to tell a story, so that's what we've got going on. So I'll examine the underbrush over here. We've got safe mode on right now. It went back on because we lost track of any enemies around. So it, it toggled back on. Like it's number of turns and or I think if enemies are visible or not. So if we wander around here and something comes within our vision radius, we'll be notified. Oh, heavy stick. Let's grab that for sure. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and wield it. So if you hit, if you hit I, you get your inventory. If you hit W, you can choose something to wield. I mean, you can go to your inventory, select something, hit enter, and then choose wield or throw or all kinds of different stuff if you want. Um, but the nice thing about hitting W to wield is you get a quick little breakdown of stats. You can see the heavy stick does twice as much bashing damage as just using a rock. It does take a little more, a little longer to swing. It's a little slower than a round to swing, but it's probably worth it. So we're going to go ahead and wield this as a weapon just in case we happen to run into something wonky. It takes you a long time to wield your heavy stick. Okay, well, all right, that's fine. Didn't find anything. So we're going to have to talk about our clothing soon. We're also going to have to talk about how uh, storage capacity works. So in our inventory, this is our weight. Our, the amount of weight we can carry, which in this case is 45 kilograms, is determined by our strength. We have a strength of 8. It's not that high, but we can still lug around 45 kilograms. Uh, I'm not sure if as this gets higher, if you get slowed down or anything like that happens. And then there's the volume of stuff you can carry, which currently is 11.5 liters worth of stuff. And where is that coming from? Well, as it turns out, this is mostly a result of our backpack. Now, if I go Shift W for where... Oh, okay, it doesn't do that. If I hit the plus key to open up our armor, is this going to sort our storage by bits here? Oh, yeah, there we go. There's a good way to see our storage. So, this is all the clothes I'm wearing here. My backpack is providing us 10 liters of storage. 
My jacket with its pockets has one liter of storage over here, and my jeans, which have smaller pockets, have a half a liter of storage in there as well. Um, if any of these things have pockets, actually, if I'm not holding anything in my hand, I believe we can keep our hands in our pockets. If I unwield the stick, uh, what's the easiest way to, un I guess if I do that, there we go, store it in my inventory, and if I check my hands again, because I think my hands are at like minus 50 or minus 60, now they're only minus 35. They're still not super warm, but I believe they're there. So if I go down to the light jacket, you can see here, um, it fits you well, which um, anything that fits you well has half its normal encumbrance. Uh, I don't know if this encumbrance number is before or after the halving. I guess we could do some math. If we take a look at our torso, we are doing the t-shirt, which is two, the light jacket, which is four, and the backpack, which is 10. Yeah, so that leads to 16 encumbrance over here. Uh, so if it didn't fit me well, I believe the light jacket would have an encumbrance of eight. It might actually have like an encumbrance of nine. I believe it rounds down. It's half rounded down. So it's important to have well-fitting clothes. Um, you can change the order that things are layered. Like I could put my t-shirt weirdly over my backpack, which means if we take damage, the t-shirt would be the first thing that would get hit, which helps protect the backpack. But it's to me, it's really dumb. So you see it says innermost and outermost over here. To me, that, that seems really dumb, so we'll, we'll order things in, in a logical way, like this. Okay, so we've got, a, we've got a plastic bottle over here, which seems like it might be worth going and picking that up. We can use it to put water in later on. Right now it's empty, but that's fine. And yeah, we'll keep searching the underbrush for a little while for something useful. Um, making our hands quite cold. Let's zoom in a bit. It'll make it a little, a little nicer. And a glass jar. Hello! So a glass jar is particularly nice for us uh, if we look at our inventory because a glass jar has level one boiling quality and level one containing. So to compare, our plastic bottle doesn't have any of that. It can hold 500 mils of liquid, but that's it. This glass jar can also hold 500 mils, half a liter of liquid, but it can be resealed, it's watertight, and you can use it to boil water which is going to be insanely, insanely useful for us um, because getting clean water is going to be a little bit of an issue. What can we speak? Oh, squirrel and chipmunk, that's fine. Uh, there's also a, a heavy stick that was behind us too. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to put a cut in here. Somehow, miraculously, we got out of school without taking any damage. I wish we could have looted a bit more on our way out, but we did snag a couple of books. The problem is now it's early spring. It's cold here, and we're going to freeze to death in the outdoors. Can we safely approach one of these houses. Maybe we should check with the motel. Maybe there's not a whole lot of dead people who have turned into zombies over there. Maybe, um, maybe this parking lot in front of the mine, maybe there's not too many zombies there. Maybe we can set that up as a base. Actually, I feel like the mine might be safer than the motel. We'll see. We'll poke around it at a distance and see what we can do. Uh, we can outrun the zombies, uh, mostly. Uh, so if we have to duck back into the woods, we probably can do that. But that'll have to wait until next time. Thank you very much for watching, folks. I'm really looking forward to the friendly advice that you guys might have. If you're new to the channel as well, hey, drop a sub. Appreciate it. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.